What's going on, Paisanos? V here. Come at you guys. Well, what <laughs> another Marco Wash today. You know, next month, we have a lot of things happening. Obviously, Lightning Overdrive, but we also have King's Court as well. And to be honest with you, I really don't know what's going to be in this set. I really want to know what do you guys think. What do you speculate? Are we going to get any reprints in the King's Court set? Hopefully, because, I mean, it looks not bad, but what we're really trying to go for here is more reprints. Don't get me wrong, I love new cards, I love new archetypes, and hopefully one day Konami releases the Mafioso archetype, but we need more reprints. There's just so many things that are so, well, expensive right now. And we're going to talk about some of that in this video, as well as other cards I think you should be selling right now. Uh, we're going to be getting a ban list as well, and you know what? Comment question today, let me know what do you think should be on that ban list. Just one card. So people are going to be commenting eight cards, I get it. Just one card. We're going to have a band prediction video coming up soon as well. Right now, looking at Lightning Overdrive, we are in the pre-sale prices, and they are going down immediately. Uh, Divine and Herald, roughly around $97 in the market price, is actually at $87, and that is the most expensive card of the set. Normally, I always tell you, I don't think you should buy series, you should buy singles, but Lightning Overdrive is looking like a really, 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 really good set. Uh, Dreadshot Mubeta to Fafni, another secret rare with a $47 market price, is roughly around $41. Now, here's the question. Hmm. What is going to happen to the Star Libraries? We know Black Rose Dragon, obviously. But do you think they'll make Diviner or Drytrum we better Fafnir Starlight Rare? To be honest with you, even though I, I would love to see both of them as Starlight Rare, my wallet would not, obviously. I think Diviner Hero can be a Starlight Rare. And I do think that we'll be getting news about that happening. So keep an eye out for that, because I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised at all. Don't get me wrong. I think it's cool to make deck-specific R-type stuff the uh, Starlight Rare. And Fafnir having that would be really cool. But I think it might be Fafnir because it could be used for more than just, well, Drytrons. Obviously, Drytrons when it first releases. Uh, looking at the rest of the cards in um, Lightning Overdrive, like Warrock, Meteor, Dragon. Warrocks in general are really weird right now because I feel like even though the deck core is like $20 right now, do you buy it? Because if it does nothing with release, you just waste your $20. But if Warlocks start coming out and start doing things and becoming really good, then obviously that $20 deck core is going to get increased astronomically. Looking at it right now, Meteor Dragon being $27, down from its $40 market price, I would wait. Be a little hesitant. Don't need to go in right now, but wait and we'll find, we'll figure out the time when the time is right. There are a lot of cards, like Book of Lunar Eclipse, which is currently $25. This card should not be $25. I'm not sure I have to explain it or not. With a current $33 market price, the card's actually down. Keep an eye on this card. Another card I'm going to call right now, that will be a Starlight Rare. That should be a Starlight Rare. And I wouldn't be surprised if it does. We also have Dark Honest and a potential Starlight Rare as well. Uh, this card with a $29, market, a $29 price point, the market price has it at $35. Once again, these are more open-ended cards. They can be used with multiple decks. And look at Book of Lunar Eclipse and Dark Honest. Would you be shocked to see that become a Starlight Rare? I really wouldn't be. Obviously, we're naming a lot, and not all these can be. But there's always potential, Paisanos. There's always a potential for these cards to have that happen. If it does, it's going to astronomically change the price. When it becomes a Starlight Rare and everybody wants it, of course they would want that. Um, then we have other cards like like some stuff from Magisters, uh, Live Twins, S-Force. I mean, once again, what deck core are you getting involved in? And if you are getting involved in those deck cores, is it because you're looking for this new stuff to actually complement that so it can see some meta play? See some meta play, goes up in value. Goes up in value, you make money. Pretty simple concept when it comes down to getting involved in all these new cards. And then there's Stratrix. I, I don't have faith in Trap Tricks. Don't get me wrong. I would love to see Trap Tricks have meta value. But how many times, Paisanos, how many times, and for my older Yu-Gi-Oh players, you can testament to this. Besides one time, actually, the, only on debut, every other time Trap Tricks have had any hype, it's quickly diminished. Like fast, like super duper duper fast. And I feel like even though Trap Tricks is getting a new support in this set, will that hype maintain? Probably not, if I had a guess. Uh, Dogmatica is getting a new card as well. Hopefully that'll be good. We don't know, but we need more Dogmatica reprints. Other than that, nobody cares about these cards. All right, looking at Warrock, like I said, Warrock, Ro Warrock Mountain currently is roughly around four dollars and fifty cents on the market price, down from a six dollar market price actually. So there's that. The other expensive Warrock card is the ultra rare Bashilios. It's like six or six cents. 
Then we have Minion, um, uh, Drytrons. Minion Drytron obviously being roughly around $70 for the Collector's Rare. Um, right over here, with a $66 current market price. Looking at the Versus for anyone who is getting involved in Drytrons. If you want to get a Nova, it's been jacked up again with a current $29 market price. Drytron Novas are roughly around $34 on TCG Player. $34 now from its $29 price point. And it was a lot lower before then. Uh, if you want to Ultra Minion Drytron, it's only like $10. Ten dollars, uh, and the rest of the direction stuff normally is relatively inexpensive. Looking at Tri Brigade, for anyone who's looking to get involved in Tri Brigade, obviously you want to get yourself a nice Starlet Rare Tri Brigade Fair Jet, the Baron blah 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 blah. Too many bees. There's two of them, but it's too many. Too too many. Uh, with a current two hundred fifty dollar market price, which the card held for a long time, the price point did get jacked up to like four hundred fifty dollars, four twenty roughly, and now it's coming back down. Yes. There's one over here for 350. There's a unverifiable seller at 330. I do predict the price of Farajet to go back down. Can it go back down to 250? Yes. I'm yes, it's gonna go back down to 250 for Farajet. Not everybody is like me and very few Yu-Gi-Oh players that want to buy these Starlight rares. And seeing Farajet slowly go back down to 250 is more than well, more than what people's gonna be no normally spending anyway for the card. If you want to get Ultra Farajet, she's only six dollars. And don't get me wrong, I personally would love to get a Starlight Farajet. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. But don't always go in and spend uh, over, over too much money for this card like it makes no sense don't get me wrong i think lightning storm is at a good price right now talents is a good price right now obviously appaloosa star is not a good price ip is not a good price but they're going to maintain those insanely high prices and slowly cool off they might not even go back down because they went went so much up and down the market but looking at tribe of Farage, this is the first spike we actually seen with this card so the card that would spike up to 450 420 is going to cool back down to 250 temporarily it will go back up again and we'll talk about that when that happens because i'm definitely looking to pick up two of these but not Yet, when the time is right, Paisanos. If you're also looking to get Tri Brigade Fractal, the card's roughly around $25. That's not bad when you look at the fact that Shurik, a card which was like $6, is actually roughly around $20. Down from its $20 market price. Then we have Zeus. If you're looking to get Zeus, you're going to want to get it now because it's about to go up even more so. Jirai Trust and Tri Brigade both need Zeus. At least one, if not two. Looking at Zeus right now with a $74 market price, the value is roughly around $73. It's on sale if you buy it now. Hey, listen. You can do whatever you want. I always do my videos description down below. I always say, hey, listen, you can buy whatever you want to buy. I'm just telling you what I'm getting involved in. I'm telling you what I'm looking at, what I'm thinking. You don't even have to buy anything. You can just watch me. And if I'm wrong, you can point and laugh at me. If I'm right, can you at least hit the subscribe button? Is it worth that? Let me know. But looking at Zeus, yeah, this card, if you don't buy this card, it's going to hit 90. No doubt in my mind. Like, it's crazy. Look at a 4 billion droplet. With the news of a reprinted Forbidden Droplet, uh, actually might impact this price point. Residues Forbidden Droplets with $117 market prices are currently down to $100. It's, it's $100, so it's, it's a lot of money. <laughs> Listen, I do think um, with the Ultimate Rare Forbidden Droplet coming out now, that actually might lower the secret price point a little more. Because in Battles of Legends, we have historically seen secret reprints. Now, obviously, Forbidden Drop is more than likely going to be a sure printed secret rare but secret rare nevertheless which will lower the price point of forbidden droplet let's not get it twisted so with the ots packs and when the ultimate rare forbidden drop is coming out people that have secret rares will more than switch over to the ultimate rares and then slowly start dumping the secret rares down the price point of this card will slowly start cooling down as we get closer and closer to the battle legends release well re-release of forbidden droplet re-re-release of the card then we have 10,000 Dragons, a card in which price point is continuing to be rising up. With a current $1,400 price point, the card is roughly around $2,000 in the market. I don't know who buys this. I'm not me. Okay, we also have Chamber Dragon Maid. Have you sold yours yet? Chamber Dragon Maid at a returning code with a $70 market price is actually roughly around $67 to $70. Now, here's the thing. Here's why I say you should sell this card. We're getting a balance soon. And don't get me wrong, I will have a balance video coming out soon. We'll talk about the balance and all that jazz. But we are going to be getting a balance. And that's very important. Do you think dragons are not going to get hit in the balance for the zillionth time? Let me talk to my friends, dragon rulers, who have told you after getting hit over and over and over again, Konami at one point just walks over to you and gives you the pity shot on the side of the road. You're about to get pity shot as a dragon link players. We all know this. Don't get it twisted. You will come back and you'll be meta again. It's going to be gravy and, and lollipops and cotton candy. But you will be getting hit on the balance. Look at Chamber Dragon Maid being so expensive right now. You need me to sell this card because without Dragon Links, this card is back down to $6. I know you can say V, but the waifu tax, yeah, the waifu tax when this card first came out of Eternity Code was $6. They didn't care about this card. Think about the other Dragon Maid cards. Could it go back down to $6? 10 maybe? Who knows? But it's definitely going to go down in value. 
Dino players. Basically, say, everything I said with dragons, you. Except you don't have a historical pattern of being a meta deck. Whatever. Listen, looking at Animal Door Arkansas, this card is going to be going down in value. With the Megatons coming out, it'll get down in value. And without the Megatons coming out, there's always a chance you get hit in the balance. Miscellaneous Storage. Uh, I'm going to have to another card. Do you want to respond? To what? To wh what do I respond to? D what? Anyway, look at Animal Door Arc I just, that's all the anger of every Yu Gi player who had to play against the Homeland League, who like dropped Miscellaneous Storage, kept making plays, and goes, is it good? You, you, you just want to get hammered to their, like, at least the ankle, right? At least the ankle? Just crack an ankle real quickly and go, is it good? And as they're crying, you just go, oh, that's right. I was going to do it anyway because there's nothing you could do about it. That's literally Miscellaneosaurus. Okay, I'm stopping right now. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, not the dinosaur players. You guys need to learn the hard way. Okay. Edmodo Arkansas. This card with a current $68 market price is kind of cooling down for the millionth time. I will give you guys that. Currently, it's at $69 market price. I do think... I, I, it, it, it's a weird situation. We have a ban list. It can get hit in the balance. It should get hit in the balance. We can all agree, besides not no players, but nobody listens to them anyway, that this should get hit in the balance. The problem is, if Konami wants to make Megatons and they want to have this card in Megatons, which they're going to have this card in Megatons, so the price will naturally tank down in value, they might not hit dinosaurs. And even though I just talked a lot of crap about dinosaurs, and they did, okay, you deserve it, dino players, you might not get hit in this ban list. Which is really weird to say because you should get hit in the ban list. But I don't think it's going to happen. I do think Animador Arkansas will, will actually be reprinted. And then, Tino players, you're going to get the pity shot. Uh, then we have Ella the Golden Lord. Now, this card with the current $56 market price, roughly around, not 56 it's actually roughly around $48,000 TC player. Can we agree that it's finally time to talk about hitting Ella in any way, shape, or form? I think it should be Sanguine. You let me know in the comments down below what you think it's going to be. And then we have Nibiru, the Prime Web Bring. This ultimate rare at OTS Orange Pack 14 with $158 market prices, uh, only at a cool $176. You want to hear a crazy secret that I'm about to tell everybody? This card is about to spike. Like a lot. Don't get me wrong. I do think with Konami reprinting Nibiru, it would be really great for the card's price point. But this card will spike. Like, if there's anything you ever listened to me in your entire life, just know that uh, this card at one time was $175. Watch out. <laughs> it's going to be worth way more. Just throwing out there. Does it, is it deserve to be worth way more? No. No, this card should not be expensive. But why? Because every card during the pandemic, and I think we can say that at this point, uh, every card is, the OTS specifically, since they're so hard to get, well, only given the plays you played in remote duels. So you sitting out there going, I'll just stay home and do nothing. <laughs> You know, you, you're going to obviously want to get some of these cards when it comes down to playing physical events. Physical events are coming back again because everyone's wearing masks and we all got our vaccine. Right, guys? Right? We all got our vaccine. You know, the vaccine. I, I know I got my my vaccine. And if anyone wants to see my paperwork, well, that's against, uh, you know, no, you're not seeing it. Just know that, you know. Anyway, the fact that some of these OTS cards, and specifically Nibiru especially, but also yes cards in general that happened throughout this pandemic, they're going to be jacked up so high in value. Right now, a lot of them are relatively inexpensive. This card, at one point, was $80. It doubled in price. But it's not even done yet. It's going to go even higher due to the fact that when we go to physical events, you're going to need these cards. And obviously, yes, you could say, V, I could get a common Nibiru when it comes out common. It's not common yet, so don't comment that. But, like, whatever. And, yeah, you can. Sure, sure you can. But for those of you girl players that want to get the high rarity cards, they're going to want to get this card. And it's going to be a lot of more money than what it's looking at right now, including Book of Moon. Book of Moon at OTS Tournament Pack 13 with a $92 market price is actually on sale at $90. The reason why this card's going to be worth so much money because, well, besides... The fact that it's not going to see any meta play is he's playing alternative Yu-Gi-Oh! formats. Now, they're still not solidified, but the minute we get one solidified alternative Yu-Gi-Oh! format, and maybe I'll do a whole video about that, because that's a whole beast to talk about. The minute we all gather as a community and knock in one Yu-Gi-Oh! format, I think that's going to be changing the way we see the secondary market for a lot of other cards. Number one. Number two, Book of Moon is using all those alternative formats. This card is about to hit $200 minimal minimal that might be a discount price point i have my play set i don't care i'm out of the game i'm not trying to invest and buy i don't care about that just throw it out there if you don't have your place at this card you're gonna man i don't want to be you okay people are saying hit pan pan verna anaconda on the ban list the card out of dual overload with a 40 dollar market price is roughly around 35 dollars for verna anaconda 35 dollars and you might go yeah hit the verna anaconda yeah 
Because hitting the problematic car is something that we just don't want to do, right? Like, the fact that people just don't realize that if you hit Pretty Pretty and Anaconda, people could just run three Red Ice Fusions, right? Guru players, they'll tell you. They literally have the deck out. Listen, you hit the problem card, everybody. Don't get me wrong. This car is super degenerate and super broken and definitely needs to be hitting the ban list. But you can't say hit Anaconda and not hit Red Eyes. I mean, you can say that, but then I'll just have to guess that you're playing Guru. And you'll go, yeah, you want to play a game? And the answer is obviously going to be no, because if I wanted to play Solitaire, I'd grab a deck of cards. Leave me alone, Guru players. But looking at Red Eyes Dr. Goon, this is the problem card. And before anyone goes, no, it's not, V. Okay, okay. How many do you own? Probably going to own a lot, if not one. And if you own one, you probably played max value. And you're just coddling this card. The fact that you haven't sold this card yet or, and or realize the fact that this card needs to be hit is hilarious at best. The fact that Red Eyes Dr. Goon, a promo that has no other reprints and no other planned reprints, tells us what's going to happen to this card. This card with the current $70 to $5 market price is actually down to roughly around $71. Now you might go, well, it's not down a lot. And you know what? You're right. Don't get me wrong. I think you're 100% correct. The thing is, if this card's not printed on the ban list, this card goes to 100 that fast. If this card is on the ban list, this card goes to, let's see, I'll probably lose about, if I had to guess, 90% value. That, that's being, being very generous. About 90% value. Percent value. Anyway, look at Everest Dr. Goon. It's going to go down in value. It's going to go down in value. It's going to get on the ban list. And the fact that people think it's not going to get on the ban list is hilarious. Hilarious. No, 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 no. And this is the Yu Gi Oh! player's negotiating. Remember, remember how every Yu Gi Oh! player that played every deck ever. And, and, and negotiated when the banners came. They're like, no, don't hit my cards. Listen, I play Chanel Invoked. They can hit my entire deck. I don't care. I'm playing Despius. Like, that's the way you got to look at it. You got to go, I'm playing an amazing deck, and they hit it. Psh, I don't care. I'm a Yu-Gi-Oh player, and I'll just buy more cards. That's what we do here. But the winners also buy and sell. Market Watch, how, how you doing? Okay, so... You should be selling Red Eyes Dr. Goon due to the fact that it's going to get, well, hit in the ban list. Don't get me wrong. If there's a reprint announced for Red Eyes Dr. Goon, there's a good chance it's not going to get hit in the ban list. Is there a reprint? You don't think Konami would reprint this card? It came out as a tin promo. You don't think they would just go, hmm, what do the players want? They want us to have more of these. The reason why it's not getting reprinted is the same reason why other broken cards in this game are not getting reprinted. It's going to get hit in the ban list. <laughs> I'll do more of my ban list prediction video in the future, guys. I really appreciate, appreciate you guys watching my videos. Listen, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Comment down below. It's your boy, Vin. You Bizanos. You Bizanos have a great day.